<laughs> oh. Sometimes these buttons are activated before I turn it on. I don't even know they're going to come up. And anyways, what better way to start than with a little muhaha and a little fat unicorn? <laughs> How's everybody doing? Oh, man. How's it going, everybody? All right. I didn't see who got here first. Was it Nicolas Nicolau? How you doing, man? Father Time's here. Branson, Mr. Fixers. Awesome. Mike, 47 UK first on Twitch, at least. That's good. That's worth something, right? That's worth something. Thanos is Pete. Nenad, how's it going, everybody? Derek Madrian, how's it going, buddy? Any special guests tonight? No special guests tonight. No special guests tonight. But uh, I, I was just thinking about, I mean, I had some stuff planned out for tonight and then, or today, today for me. But then I, I had, golly, I got to turn that down. Thank you for subscribing, Raspy. Um, yeah, that's my that's that Xiaomi that Xiaomi speaker, that Xiaomi Bluetooth sound bar that I was talking about in the last stream. It's huge and it's set right here and I love it. And it's really loud. It's right in my face. <laughs> What's up, Christian? Tony, lockdown birthday. Can't go out, so I'm spending my birthday with online buddies. Hey, happy birthday, Tony. Happy birthday to you. Hello, my name's Peter. I'm addicted to home assistant. Hello, Peter. <laughs> Mm, uh, is ask working from youtube yes justin z it is nice thank you for checking okay let's see uh what was i gonna say oh um my thoughts for today so i got several things we're going to talk about today i think the big theme of the day and who knows where it will really go right because sometimes you know these guys uh. show up yeah. <laughs> but my thought for the day is we got the Hobbit hole going. It's like full steam ahead right now. And uh, I was thinking about it and like steps of construction and what has to happen. And I realized, well, I haven't really given any thought to the smart homeness of it. I mean, I, I'm sure I'm going to have some, but I haven't really thought about what it's going to be. And so I think it would be a great time. Like now's the time to plan it. And how much more fun is that with you guys than it is by myself? So today, uh, as the big theme of the day is we're going to get out the Hobbit hole plans that we have and do some markups and say, okay, we want door sensor here, window sensor here, uh, ethernet here, uh, cameras, you know, whatever it's going to be light switch relays, that kind of stuff that we, so we can wire it all ahead of time. So that should be fun. <laughs> Soon I'll need to plan wiring my new house. So I'm all ears. Fantastic, Adrian. Fantastic. Okay. Well, let's do it. Now, before we go too far, I did promise a couple people that I would make mentions. And um, the first is Tuya. And they didn't, they they offered to pay me. And I said, for what? I'm not, I don't need you to pay me. But anyways, Tuya is having a, a some sort of global expo conference. And I think it's probably going to be mostly for industry folks who are, you know, looking to brand devices or make devices and use two year or something. I don't know, but it looks interesting. It looks like there might be a lot of, a lot of, uh, good topics or a lot of insights into what's coming, um, specifically or what's available. So if you want to check it out, the link is in the description. You can sign up. Um, I hope it doesn't cost anything. I don't really know, but hopefully it doesn't cost anything. And, uh, yeah. So they just reached out to me and said, Hey, we're going to do this conference. We'd really like to get some people to know about it. Um, so there you go. Now, you know, there's links in the description for this and, um, they gave me a couple other things like other, other, like a press release and some other sp spreadsheet or something else. So anyways, there you go to you conference. Check it out. Pew. Number two, number two obligation for the day. I feel really bad about this one because I got to find it. I lost it. I, they sent me, so this is from Sonoff, and they sent me their new dual relay power monitoring switch. So really, this is basically like a Shelly 2, what is? what did they call it? A 2, was it a 2 plus, 2B or, or something? I can't remember what they called it. Ooh, the Tuya. Ooh, the Tuya. He says Toya. <laughs> uh, 
twice as much PDS cabling as you need. That stuff can be used for anything. PDS, by PDS, what do you mean PDS? Is that, um, what is PDS? Is that the, um, like, Ethernet? Or is that a different name for it? Or is that something totally different? Teach me, oh, wise ones. First time catching the live stream. Fantastic. Thanks for being here. Oh, we got to do something for your birthday, too. Tony, what, what do you want me to do for your birthday? I mean, within reason. Okay. So, Sonoff. Sonoff's got this, their new dual relay power monitoring smart switch. And they sent me one. And I was just looking for it. And I cannot find it. But it looks a lot like a Shelly. Um... So I'm not surprised they're, you know, the Shelly's been out for a while now, Shelly too, uh, but Sonoff has uh, something similar now. So I, I'm going to check mine out. I, what I wanted to do is play around with it and put it in Sonoff LAN, uh, check out what you can do about external buttons and such. So here's switch one, switch two. I don't know if those are high voltage, low voltage, you know, we'll check out some of these things, but. Anyways, it's kind of cool. It's certainly a low price. I mean, my gosh, 13 bucks. So check it out. Okay. Okay. Bang. I was hearing Lucifer and Ambilite. Hey, Ruperto, thank you very much for Super Chat. Um, let's do this because of Super Chat. B -b 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 Purple Duck Sugar. Well, yeah. Who doesn't want some of that? Cat 5.6 Ethernet. Okay, cool. Yes, awesome. Let's Let's plan on putting that everywhere. No UL. Nope. And that's so big advantage for Shelly now, right? Because I think Shelly's, I think everything that they're doing is UL. At least anything you're going to put in your wall, like their Shelly too. I'm sure that the, 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 well, I love my Shelly stuff. I didn't know that about that. First time to live. Hello, Dorval. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. And Frederick, first time also. I'm so happy to hear first time people are here. Door locks to allow Gandalf the wizard in. That's right. That's a good, yeah, we, that's a good, thank you for bringing that up, David. We got to remember door locks too. Um, I was, I had a thought, now it's gone. Whoosh, whoosh. Well, um, I, oh, I know what I was going to say, Luciferin. So actually I am using Luciferin right now. I actually have both my monitors with Luciferin and I have a script written. I know that a lot of people have been asking about um, well, for a long time, since I've been, since I slowed down the sort of production level videos, I've had constantly people saying, we really want you to do more production level videos. And I, I, I've, I've heard it, I've heard it and I like doing them and I want to do them too. So I'm trying to make more steps to make that happen. I did, I put out two this week. Those were, those were both pretty good. The next one will be Luciferin. It'll be about setting up Luciferin. Um, there's going to have to be shortly after that, a Luciferin Hyperion comparison. I'm not going to wait and try and do that before I shoot the Hyperion video or sorry, the, the Luciferin video, but I think we, we definitely are going to have to do a side by side. And then I know that Luciferin is, uh, the next, the next release of Luciferin, which is going to be in the next couple of weeks, two, three weeks, he said, cranberry, cranberry sauce, something said, and that will have, he said, an improved algorithm for how it does the lights. Because if I don't, I only have one complaint about Luciferin so far, and that is that it is uh, sometimes a little choppy, sometimes a little choppy. So I don't know like how it's, how it's determining where, you know, which, which lights to light up and how bright and what colors and stuff is a little choppy. It's good on a big, a big scheme. And for the price of the hardware, it's hard to beat. Um, Cause it's like two bucks for the, uh, you know, D1 mini or whatever. So anyways, yeah, we'll talk about Luciferin. Um, da, 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 da. okay. What is Shelly? Shelly is a brand of smart home devices as well that are really awesome. Lorex cameras. Ooh, I don't know what Lorex cameras. What's a Lorex camera? We'll go to Shelly and then we'll, then we're going to bust out. We're going to bust out the plans for the Hobbit hole. Yeehaw. So this is their new awesome thing that they put out the motion. Uh, and I have one here too, and it's awesome. I played with it. It's actually really good. It's a rechargeable battery. I, I know, I think Paul Hibbert put this out, put a video out and a couple other guys have too. I did like a one minute video for them for their little promotion when they got started, sent that to them. I didn't post it on my channel, the 2.5. So this would be like comparison to that Shelly or that uh, Sonoff device. 
But Shelly is, they're, they're all small little devices. They're all made to go behind your existing light switches and, and connect to your existing light switches. Um, and they, they build good stuff. They've got great software. They've got great integration with everything. It used to be, you know, they were one of the first ones to like natively implement MQTT in their firmware. And that was fantastic. You know, that was a couple of years ago and they were, they were the first ones to say, oh yeah, sure. We'll put MQTT in our firmware. You don't have to flash or do anything. You just, you just use it. And it, and we did, and it was awesome. Now there's a Shelly integration for Home Assistant, which works really well as well. So you don't even have to use MQTT anymore. You just grab the Shelly's and go. And Shelly is one of the few smart home devices, even a lot of these ones that you can buy on Amazon. It, the device doesn't have to be UL listed to be used. It has to be UL listed to be insured, I guess, or something like that. But anyways, it's a, it's, it's a, a, a nice thing to have that the UL inspector dudes have checked out the device. And Shelly has gone through that process and very few others have. So it's awesome. Shelly's, Shelly's great company. Plus they're good. They're, 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 I mean, they're getting bigger and bigger, but, um, you know, I, I've met the guys that, you know, the guy in charge, the, the CEO. And, um, uh, some of his, uh, most close helpers, great guys, just fun guys to be around and anything. All right. Hello, my slick headed friend. How's my day? My day is so good. We got the Dr. Pepper. We got lots of friends. We're going to talk about fun stuff. Ah, building a home from scratch right now. Close to finish though, but I designed the smart home myself pretty carefully. Can't wait to live on it. Nice, Miguel. But it's all wired. And that's what I'm going for, too. I really, really, really want to go for the wired stuff. The Shelly 2 dimmer looks quite compelling. I'm sure it's good. Anyone have some great AliExpress cameras sub 100 like Daewoo? There are many. Uh, Nicola, right now I'm on a, I'm, I'm pretty much on a real link kick as far as cameras go. Insty on switches? Do I? Do I got to look? Do I? Maybe. Anki? Are all those lights on your dashboard really on? Yes, they really are. I know, right? Got a lot of lights in the house. But some of these are like, they're not all lights. Some of them are switches. So, but yeah, these are really all, are really on. Boys room lights, the master floor heat. So it's got a lot of stuff in here. Switches, plugs, stuff like that. But yeah, they are. They are all on. <laughs> all right, here we go. Ready? Ready to share? Ready to start looking at some plans? Here it is. Bum, bum, bum. So I opened up. Oh, I zoomed in. So let's zoom out a little. And I figured this would be a good way to do it. I'm sorry I can't do dark mode. Is that going to burn everybody's retinas if I leave this on like this? Because this is... Uh, uh, this is the Adobe Reader, and I don't have a dark mode. Thing for it. Um, the best way to, to give you an idea of what the Hobbit hole is going to be like is probably to look at a couple of these elevation kind of pictures like this. Okay. So let's zoom in here. For those of you who don't know what the heck I'm talking about or what the heck I'm doing, we bought some empty land, quite a bit of empty land, a couple hours from where we live right now. And we are building this guy on it. Can't you open in Chrome? I can open in Chrome, Tycho, but then I'm afraid I won't be able to edit it. Maybe I, maybe there's an add-on I need for Chrome to edit it. What do you think? Do you, is if, is it bad? Is the if the light's bad, we can we can work with that. So this should be dark mode. See, even even dark mode in Chrome is not it's not doing it. It's not shown in its dark mode because it's a PDF. So, sorry. Anyway, this is our Hobbit hole, and uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be breaking ground here. We're gonna be breaking ground here like in the next couple of weeks. Like it's 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 happening. It absolutely has to positively has to get done by June first. And I guess I can I can I can tell you why. Can't I tell you why? Hey, what? Hey, on how you doing, man? How you been? Oh, Destiny One. Oh, the good old days. The good old days. How's things, dude? That's crazy. Thanks for saying hi. I haven't played Destiny in in a while. It's been over a year for sure. Uh, 
Anyways, that's cool, man. Thanks for saying hi. <laughs> clan buddies, old clan buddies from uh, from Destiny back in the day. Okay. Um. So, oh, well, here's what I was going to tell you. What I was going to tell you is the super top secret, maybe not too secret thing is not showing up here but we'll, we'll we'll tell you should we tell you i'm gonna tell you okay we got crazy we got crazy good news crazy cool news we're gonna be on tv <laughs> uh we're gonna be on tv this tv show it's on the diy network it's called um building off the grid and they are going to film the construction of our hobbit hole and make an episode of their show out of it how awesome is that? Right? How awesome is that? I just got the official word like, I guess it was Friday. <clears throat> I got the official word Friday. We got meetings this week to talk about contracts and all that kind of stuff. Um, so pretty awesome. Huh? So this is what's really kicked the Hobbit hole construction into high gear because we got to get this. They, they, they're like, you know, you got to be done by June 1st. You know, we, we, we got to get all this stuff together and you got to be done by June 1st. So we're like, okay, here we go. Fortunately, we're like most of the way there already. Like we've been making a lot of progress. Thank you very much, Sir Charles. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's the DIY network, which is some sort of branch of discovery. And, uh, yeah, this is the show building off the grid. So you can go watch their episodes, but that's going to be us. So we got to get going. We got to get going. Sorry, late to the party. Why are you building a hobbit hole? Why not, Rusty? You know what's funny? Here's the story. Here's a little bit of a background story. So we've wanted for a long time to have some kind of property, some kind of place where we can go as a little bit of a getaway for our little family, but also for our extended family and for generations, right? I think everybody, well, maybe not everybody, but I think a lot of us have that kind of dream, right? You want Everybody wants a homestead, a place where they can go be with the people they love by themselves in the peace and quiet, safe, all that, especially after this past year of wildness. I mean, we all kind of feel like we need a safe place to go and a place to get away from the, from the nutty. So here it is. So we, we found this land and we bought it. And then um, I actually, it all started because I wanted to build a, I wanted like this, I wanted a cheap house. I just wanted a little cheap house. And, and I found these little dome houses on AliExpress for like, I mean, the big ones were like $11,000 plus something to ship it up here and all that stuff. But grand total was going to be like less than $20,000 to build this little house. And that was what I wanted to do. I just wanted a little, put a little house on this a little $20,000 foam concrete dome. <laughs> and it's, it's evolved into a monster. Um, we found a different dome company with a bit more, um, probably, you know, proof of structure and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and then it's turned into, you know, the basement and now we go crazy on Hobbit theme stuff. Uh, my wife's got some designer friends that are really helping us out and now we got TV show and everything. So it's turned into quite a monster. Yeah. Bug out, bug out location. That's right. That's right. Um, and then we're going to do a lot of other th missile silo. Nice. We're going to do a lot of other stuff uh, that I think is pretty cool. Like this is all off the grid. So it's going to be solar, battery backup, generator, well, septic, and uh, probably most exciting to me is geothermal. So we're going to have a big old geothermal pipe field and we're going to have radiant heat and radiant cooling. I, I verified with the company that we're going to work with that we can do cooling in the floor as well. So in the summertime when it's hot, the floor is going to be cool. And I know condensation, all that stuff. We're just going to have um, cement floor, polished um, cement floor and all that. So it should be pretty sweet. It should be pretty awesome. Not so critical stuff. Sensors, templates, Zigbee to save money. King of things, the battery dies. You can wait until the next weekend to change them. Yeah. Way, way too many people in the Netherlands. You guys don't have this kind of open space. Am I going to go smart? Of course. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm only here for a couple minutes. Okay, Nicholas, I wanted to say hello. Hello, how are you doing? All right, we'll have to watch later. Thanks for being here, Nicholas. Thanks for saying hi. What about building Sarah? Eureka? I don't know. <laughs> okay, anyways. 
I would hope it lives up to the show's name, right? Yeah, it would be kind of disingenuous to not build off the grid. We're not terribly far off, but we are off. So technically it counts. <laughs> in Europe, many counties or countries are required to put wires in electrical pipe. Oh, most walls are some kind of brick. Oh, wait, that's a bummer. Well, so this is going to bring, this is uh, bringing up some interesting points. So let's look at the floor plan here. Um, I think this is probably a good one. We can just work off this floor plan here. So let's zoom in on the first floor. Okay. So this is the first floor. This is where you come in, hobbit door here, big old hobbit door. We're going to have a couple of small little, uh, not small, they're going to be like two foot. We're going to have two uh, port, porthole kind of windows on the sides. I mean, it's honestly going to look, it's going to be this, right? That's what we're going for, right? Oh, that's right. I was going to do it in this one so I can edit This is so choppy though. Ugh. Um, where was I? Okay. So you come in the front over here, there's going to be, so this is not totally laid out exactly how it's going to be. It's changed a bit since this, but over here, we're going to have a little fireplace thing. It's just wood burning fireplace chimney going out this way. Little sitting area here, window here, window here. Kitchen stuff's all going to be there. I want to get to think about anything Anything we need to do in the kitchen as far as smart stuff goes. Window, door, window, window, window. So we're going to need, we're going to need wire. Let's, let's start uh, setting up some kind of, ooh, this is a stamp. Oh, approved, revised, received, confidential. Check, X. Custom stamps. Create a custom stamp. Oh, oh, I have to bring it in. Dang it. All right. Well, then let's just mark. Let's use a certain color. Maybe we're going to use. Uh, so let's mark door and window sensors first. OK, Bilbo Z's. That's right. Oh, ha do you have to mow the roof? Maybe, man. Maybe, maybe a pellet stove. You mean like for the you mean the, um, what is a pellet stove? Is that like the smokers? The whole the whole thing for the fireplace is really just aesthetics. It's just to look at it, smell the smoke a little bit. Um, it's not going to be uh, really, we don't really want to provide it a bunch of heat. We, we just want, because um, we're going to have geothermal plus, you know, a little bit of propane, a little bit of electricity to heat the water to have our, um, get a goat. Yeah, that's what we need, Klaus. You got it, buddy. We need goats. We totally need goats. Miss Eureka show. Oh, wish they never canceled. Oh, that show. Oh, okay. I see. Dude, I love that idea of the goats. Oh my gosh. I love that idea of the goats. You'll have to somehow implement light shafts or tubes. Oh, you know what I was thinking about is we're going to do, you know, if you look at everybody, all of you guys have seen the Hobbit movies or Lord of the Rings, right? Or you've seen Bilbo's house, you know, and they kind of have this paneling up the sides like halfway. And then it's, and then it's a uh, dome on top, right? So this dome, it goes up about three, three, four feet. I can't remember. It goes up straight on the walls a little bit, and then it starts to bend in. So what I think we're going to do is put some wood, wood paneling kind of stuff, kind of like Bilbo has, up to that point. And then from there, it's going to be the dome. So I was thinking that, that the edge of that wood is a great place to put some lighting, whether it's like, I don't think, you know, Big long strips of RGB LEDs is the right thing there, but it might be good to have you know in certain places uh, light that would shine up. You know, I think that would be very cool. And we definitely want to have some kind of um, candle, you know, lights that look like candles a little bit. I think that's going to be awesome too. How much electricity are you looking at generating? You're going to need about fifteen to twenty kilowatts per day. I have a, a four bedroom house with geothermal photovoltaic panels and about 20 kilowatts per a day. We have a, um, so we have a solar system that is, uh, 18, 320 watt panels, which I think is five kilowatts. So at maximum we can generate five kilowatts. We've got a battery that is 9.6 kilowatt hours. And then we have a generator that's 14 kilowatts. We need to jump, pump that on. So I, I we did the we did the calculations. I don't remember right now what it's going to be or what it, what it was. 
but we don't have air conditioning, right? Well, I guess you don't either. Sounds like, right? You got geothermal and all that stuff. Michael, where are you? Cause that's an awesome system. I'd love to pick your brain. And there was somebody, and I can't remember, I thought it was Joel. Was there Joel that lives like near me up there in, in Idaho where this is going to be? And I cannot, I cannot uh, find his contact. Like he hasn't been around for a little while. Those fake flame lights. Yeah, those are, those are going to look cool, Mitch, right? New Zealand, they have banned the use of propane in new houses. No kidding. Wow, we haven't done that yet. Why is that? Why is that? Is that is it just does it burn dirty or is it dangerous or why do they do that? Why why would they ban it? CCT LED strips if you're using them warm and cool white. Yeah, that's what we want. We definitely want some warm light, you know. So, okay. Well, let's let's think about what we're going to do with door and window sensors, okay? So, let's just start making some red dots here and we're going to say we need a window sensor here. Oh, Oh, and a window sensor here. Those are too small. Let's make them bigger. So we're going to go back. You guys really want to watch me do this? I, I, I hope so. Okay, we're going to put a window sensor here. So now some of these are just bra ah, glass break. Add a text comment. So like this one doesn't open. So this would just be... Uh, glass, you know, glass break sensor. Okay. Um, same with over here. So that's going to be the same over here. This one's just going to be glass break sensor. Okay on this window here. But these others are going to be open closed sensors because these ones are all open closed sensors. We definitely oh this one's for the door. It's in kind of the wrong place. It's actually got to be over here a little bit more. So let's erase that one. Okay. And this one down here is going to be a glass break. I don't know how those work. Oh yeah, we need fire and smoke. You dang right, Paul. By the way, Paul, um, how's your wired alarms thing going? So Paul Randall, everybody here. It, it had, so uh, you know, um, uh, was it uh, C Sharp Worm came up with this sketch for me for my Arduino Mega Alarm Panel. We got to talk about what's the best way to do this as far as wires too. Like, what are we going to bring it all into, and how we what, what are we going to use for hardware? Uh, but Paul has been doing the same thing with an Arduino Mega making um, an alarm panel, a wired alarm panel. So you can take a, a wired alarm system in your house with all the sensors running back to your certain spot in the house and hooking it up to an Arduino Mega um, with an Ethernet, with an Ethernet jack so you can wire it to your network. Um, that was before we had ESP32 Ethernet. And I was looking at it last night. Once you Once you put the Ethernet into the ESP32, you're, you're limited to the number of pins quite a bit. It's down to about 14, probably. Paul R. on Discord. 12-volt power runs through the whole house for things like motorized blinds. Heck yes, Stone Obscurity. Heck yes. You know what I want to do? We're not going to have too many blinds, but I've got this cool idea for... I've got a really cool idea for um, making uh, blinds on a round window. Think about like a... Um, like a propeller. So say you've got, I don't know, is a propeller the right word? So you've got slats and you've got a bunch of them. Okay. A bunch of them all stacked together. All slats, all in a, in a line with a center knob or whatever you want to call it. The, the, they're all, they can all rotate and then they're all connected to each other with a string so that when you grab the top one and pull it, it pulls the one behind it and pulls the one behind it and pulls the one behind it. So then you take it and you just spin it around, you know, 180 degrees and it closes the window. Like a camera iris. Well, this one, I mean, maybe that would probably be even more complicated, but yeah, something like that, right? Something like that. So you can shut them. Cause I was thinking about, well, how you've got these beautiful round windows. How do you, how do you cover them? Cause sometimes you're going to want to cover them. It's going to be dark. You're going to be naked. Eh. 
<laughs> you're going to want them covered sometimes. 48 bolt setup with butt converters for sections. That's uh yeah, I'm going to have to talk to our, our, our electrician because I thought about that because our solar, our solar system is producing 48 volts, right? Or at least the inverter, the, the battery controller, whatever you want to call it, the charge controller is, is outputting 48 volts. And then we're, we're inverting it to 120 AC and then we're converting it back down to DC. And I just hate that. I just feel like that is, um, I just feel like that is wasteful. But anyways, Discord. Oh, hey. Ooh, what you got, James? Oh my gosh. Oh, what? Oh, yes. So good call. Good call. This is, um, J after dark. Okay. <laughs> That's right, Andres. We're in Hobbit country. Who cares if we're naked? It's part of the Hobbit life. But yeah, that's a great idea. Those kinds of, um, these kinds of lights with the bendable stuff. So we could actually put them on the ceiling. I forgot about that. Totally right. Okay. Okay. See, this is why I'm so glad I'm doing this with you guys. Because 200 brains are better than one. Okay. All right. So break glass sensor there. And then we're going to have the window sensor here. We're going to have a door sensor for the Hobbit door. It's going to be over here. And then we're going to have to have two more glass break sensors on these as well. Now, who has, do you guys have uh break glass sensors? I don't. Break glass, glass break, whatever. I don't think I do. I don't know how they work. If anybody wants to find a link to a wired glass break sensor, shoot it to me in Discord or, or in the chat. We'll find it. Using an old PC server power supply, five separate 12 volt supplies. Yeah, those are those are very useful, Wayne. Those are very useful. I played with those for things in the past too. Smurf tunes for all network lines in case. Oh, Smurf tubes, you mean? Did you pull another wire? That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Glass breaks are listen to sound. Glass breaks a certain frequency. So then do you, so guys, do you, um, do you just have them in a certain area? I was just going to say that. Yeah. Four tracks. Can they just, yeah. Cause that maybe that's the thing to do. Maybe it's just a, you know, an echo, de echo device for the brake glass. I just want it to be really, really solid and trustworthy because this is going to be in the middle of nowhere. And maybe that's protective in some extent, right? Cause somebody's going to go out there and try and rob it if it's in the middle of nowhere hopefully but if they do it's also in the middle of nowhere which means it's going to take a while before anybody gets there to stop them. so i want to know like what is going on instantly right oh cool glass break sensor okay 50 bucks too expensive <laughs> What should we, okay, let's go back to placing things. Oh, wait, that's not the right one. This one. Okay, let's go back to placing things. We are, we haven't had, like, I don't think we have a smoke detector, um, but, you know, a smoke detector plan either, but we're going to have to do that for sure. Four glass breaks for 2,400 square feet. Okay, Paul, awesome. Four by Honeywell. Oh, you added glass break to the alarm sketch? Oh, awesome. So is those the kind you have? Are those ones that four tracks sent? Gosh, I'd hate to have to spend that much on them, but I guess they're worth it. Is this what you have too, Paul? Internet in the middle of nowhere. So you might think so, Panda. You might think that that would be a problem. Um, so here's what we have. Where we, uh, where the, where this is going to be, we have a plateau that's kind of high. And then we go down a little bit, maybe a hundred feet down. And that is the, where the hobbit hole is going to be. Kind of goes downhill a little bit. But up at that area up above, we get great cell service. So, so we're not going to have a problem with, honestly, 4G, AT&T up there is no problem. Uh, you know, everybody's talked about whatever it is, Tesla link, Starlink, whatever. So we might do that. Uh, but I think right off the bat, it's just going to be a 4G router um, and then Ethernet from 
from so we've got like a pavilion or what we're calling the, the we're calling it the green dragon <laughs> so it's going to be a a where we have our roof for our solar panels and our inverter and our batteries and all that so at that point we'll run electrical down to the house and in that we'll run ethernet so it can go from yeah, i'm sure elon will send me one i'm sure <laughs> starlink yeah so we'll run Ethernet down there. So we'll have base, uh, you know, a 4G router up at the top at the pavilion, and then we'll have Ethernet coming in here to a router in this in this place, and then out, out from there. Cradle Point 4G router. I would love to just use Unify stuff, um, unless there's something better coming along, well, and only because I know it now, and and I know that it's, you know, it's good. <laughs> Air quotes good because it gives me a hard time. Is it shorter than 100 meters? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Because 100 meters would be 300 and something feet. So yeah, it's shorter than that. It's about maybe maybe 150 feet, I think. Vibration sensors. Smart ones recognize the sound of breaking glass. 4G routers are great, but seem weather affected. Yeah, probably true. Don't trust the flying head. What's up, Igor? <laughs> I kind of have a flying head today. Let me look at this router real quick. So this one's highly recommended, eh? I'm wondering, so we, we put a camera up there that was supposed to be sending us pictures of 4G, you know, over the 4G network, and it stopped. And I think it stopped because the battery's dead, but I don't know until I get up there. Unify has a cellular router, honestly. Okay, good. For security, uh, I would not do any DIY. I would choose a reliable old brand for all the sensors and main unit like DSC Honeywell, which can be added to Home Assistant later. Everything wired with GSM caller for sure. Yeah. transparent opaque glass you use them at work john i'm on a 4g router now from the deepest darkest whales <laughs> so it works the name of my chrome theme oh gosh um i don't remember i don't remember sorry anyways Anyways, sorry, I don't remember that. <laughs> All right, let's go down to the basement. We got to put some door. We got to put some window sensors down here too. There aren't too many, but there are. There's one window over here, and then there are two windows here. So there's two sensors there. Golly, that's horrible. So these are all going to be wired back to the. Um, we're back to the, the utility area over here. Now, what else do we need? Because we got door window sensors. Um, as far as lighting, I do want to also have like the ability to switch lights on and off pretty easy. Sorry, Dennis. It's just a, it's a, it's some nice dark one. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, glass that gets milky when current hits it. Oh, is that what you're talking about? Oh, motion sensors instead of break glass sensors. We definitely also need motion sensors because I do want to know like just when, when people are in an area. So I think like in this situation here, I'm trying to think where would be a good spot for motion sensor. Honestly, good spot for motion sensor. Well, maybe we could do a couple. Why, why can't we just do it? Why can't we do a couple motion sensors? So let's change the color. So red, we're going to do this. And we're going to say that that is door window sensor. We're going to color code this thing. Okay. Now we're going to change the color. We're going to go with this cyan color for motion sensors. Oh, 
Nope, it's got to be color coordinated. Can't be messing around with this. Got to be color coordinated. Got to do it right. Why is, if you're going to do it, do it right. Nope. Motion. That's a hard color to see. And I need to save this from time to time so we don't lose any of this. This geniusness. I think, okay, so I don't, I, I don't have in the walls, in these, in these fiberglass walls, there are some channels for wiring for lights and things so that you can put some, you can hang some lights. So they do give you some empty channeling for that, I think. Um, I know in some situations too, they tell you to, to like put them, um, like poke holes in it with conduit on the outside. I don't really want to do that. I do not want to violate the integrity of this thing at all. I don't want this thing to leak water for like 50 years at all. So I'm thinking I want to, there are some places where we have like hard walls that we have to build. This is one, this is one, um, this is one, you know, along here, these are, these are built walls. So I think I want to try and keep any motion sensor stuff or any wiring in those areas, right? Free pool. <laughs> the AM321s, I think the AM321 or 312s, I think the AM312s are reliable sensors and they're wired. So I like that. What do you guys think? Give me some feedback on that. WLED 12 multi-strip is coming along well. Been running it for a few days. Not many bugs. Awesome. Bozeman, is it, is, it's not out though yet, right? The WLED 12 is not out yet. I saw Quindor playing with it a couple weeks ago. Right, David? I am living the dream. This, 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 this is perfect, right? This is so fun. This is so important too, to get this right. So I think, so we're going to have fireplace here. And honestly, I think that on this fireplace would be a good spot for a motion sensor. So something like, you know, it'll sit on the edge of the fireplace here. And I think that will be a good spot for a motion sensor. Do motion sensors, um, do they interfere with each other? I think that's probably fine. I was thinking about putting one over here as well, but I'm not sure if we need one here and here. I think if we have one here and then we put one like, Need one like over here somewhere for all this area, or we could put one here out this way, probably. Maybe that's what we should do. We should put one here, something like this. Yeah. And then we should probably put one here because this is going to catch somebody coming in the back door. This would catch somebody in here. That would cover that window. Um, Motion sensors in the bedrooms. What do you guys think about that? Is the fireplace going to be home assistant? No, the fireplace is just going to be wood. It's just going to be old fashioned wood. The heat of the fireplace might. It's not hopefully going to be too, too hot. We're trying to keep it from being too hot. We really don't want it for hot. All right. Saturos. What did, uh, what did we end up doing for Tony's birthday? Go with wired alarm. Yeah. Use motion sensors for light, etc., and alarm. Uh, Invisalink integration. Invisalink integration. Huh? So we can, you know, I'm. I would love to get some feedback on, you know, like what you guys think about the hardware, right? The the read switches and, you know, I don't care if it's AM three twenty one or three twelves is fine. Uh, they're small and they they work well. So I'll wire all that back to a panel of some kind, and then I want it to be fairly good hardware, reliable hardware on that end. And of course, has to integrate with Home Assistant. Motion sensors may get ghost alerts because of the heat of the fireplace. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, if there's a fire burn in here, I'm more worried about the motion sensors when it comes to um, people not being in the house, right? So hopefully if there's heat, the motion sensor won't get messed up, but we'll, we'll, that's a good question. So maybe what we should do is go ahead and wire a motion sensor for over here as well. Or we could put one here to cover this area. What's the, what's the usual, uh, what's the radius of picking up on these, um, on these uh, motion sensors? P 
PIR dual technology occupancy sensor, 360 field of view, 600 square foot. Wow. Commercial grade. Nice. Ultrasonic PIR. Ooh, that's cool. James, do you have these integrated with something? So they are wired, right? What do they integrate with? Okay, I got to say this to my, my list here. This one, might as well say this one too. I just bought the Lord of the Rings extended edition on, on Amazon so that I could watch it again. Because we have, all we have is on disc. We don't have discs or disc players really anymore in most places in the house. Zombie secured. <laughs> We're going to have plenty of chainsaws. <laughs> okay, so DCS alarm with Invisalink works great with home assistant. Okay, Rich. DSC alarm. I've heard that for sure before. Ultrasonic, PIR and ultrasonic. Yeah, I like that. What you got here, Postman? You made it. Shield resource firmware. Is this, so the beta bin. Oh, okay, so I can download the bin file here and use it. So if you want the if you want the uh, WLED um, version twelve beta bin files to, for easy flashing, there you go. I totally do. I really need I really need to play with that. What was that sound? That was funny. All right. So motion sensor there. So back to this um, motion sensor for the motion sensor for the bedroom. What do you guys think? Camera for home assistant integration. That's a, you know, that's a good question. I, I kind of, I haven't been integrating into home assistant as much with the cameras lately because the, the standalone NVRs do such a great job. But if you, if you really want to do that, the, my, what I recommend with cameras and home assistant is use blue iris, but that requires like a, not maybe a dedicated PC, but certainly a PC that's going to be able to run all the time with windows, um, to run blue iris and then blue iris, you can use pretty much any camera. You know, almost any camera can can be used by Blue Iris to bring in your your camera feed, and then Blue Iris can send it to Home Assistant pretty easily. Am I going to stick with the Xiaomi temperature sensors? I don't think so, Panda Boy. I think I want wired temperature sensors too. Yeah, I want wired temperature sensors, which is a great next thing to bring up. Let's see. Let's keep going with motion for a minute, though. Do I want a motion sensor in the bedroom for lights? I mean, it might as well, right? I mean, you might as well wire it. And then if we don't use it, we don't use it, but let's wire it. Okay. And then let's go to the basement and do motion sensors in the basement. So motion sensors in the basement. Yeah, we definitely need a motion sensor here, one here. And I want these like pointing at the windows, right? This is like belt and suspenders. This is mostly security. It'd be nice for controlling lights too, but it's mostly for security. Um, definitely need motion sensor pointing this way. All right. Metal neck. Thanks for following metal neck. <laughs> uh, and then this kind of TV area here. Let's see. We're going to have. So these walls will be a little bit different, so don't don't be too fooled by this, but we're gonna have we'll put motion sensor here. I know I know what walls are actually here versus what this shows. So don't be don't worry about this. I want that to point at that window. And then motion, 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 motion. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, let's go back to the top and now let's do temperature sensors. Let's do temperature sensors, temperature sensors. Why does it gotta be a song? Why can't you just say temperature sensors? I don't know. Okay, temperature sensors are gonna be green. These are gonna be wired also. Now here's an idea. Managed wall sockets, somewhat, somewhat. Um, Blake Black Shear for cameras, interesting. 
Better have the wires, right? Better to have the wires. Speaking of motion, I got the Xiaomi ones with Lux. Weirdly, it doesn't report its battery. That is weird. What uh, integration are you using? Is that that's the Xiaomi ones or the Zigbee ones? So great question, Athema. Athemi, sorry. Um, that's a great question. That's a that's a major that's a major um, branch point that we have to think about when we're planning out how we're going to wire the house. Do we want to manage it at um, do we want to manage it at the basically the panel or the circuit breaker level, or do we want to manage it at the light switch level? Pros and cons. Let's think about it. Um, managing it at the circuit breaker level or thereabouts. Uh, the good part is you're just running less wires, less less point of failure. Just say, oh, just say Lewis. Okay, Lewis, that's easy. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just call you Lewis from now on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but running the wires for all those extra switches, you know, like to each light switch um, is a lot. And if you can control them at the circuit breaker, that would be a lot easier. The trick is your home runs, right? Like what's all on one circuit breaker? And can you do, do you switch the whole thing or do you, or do you switch it, you know, locally instead? Because then you can be more precise, right? You can't change brightness or color when doing it from a breaker. That's true. Um, I don't think that we'll change much brightness, but we might because we are going to have, you know, this is going to be a lot of sort of aesthetic lighting too. Divide the house in three panels maybe wireless light switches i'm going to try and stay martin i'm going to stay away from wireless as much as i can right now would switching at the breaker meet local code well i think we could switch right after the breaker but i, I like not in the breaker will require more wires oh vertical or horizontal planning <laughs> let's think about this um so one idea one thing that i've had in mind that I've thought about doing for my own house for a long time now is a, you know, a light switch basically that, you know, a, 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 a smart device, we'll just call it a smart device that connects to ethernet. So you just plug the ethernet into it, which would make it, you know, we could use ESP 32s just cause I know how to program them. It didn't even have to be that it could be something else, but if it was an ethernet connected device, then at the, at the hole in the wall where you would put your light switch, you could have relays for the light switch. You could also have the door sensor right there. You could also have a motion sensor. You could also have a light sensor and a temperature sensor. And it could all be right there at the light switch and wired. What do you think about that? I don't think a beast like that exists, but I have had it in my mind for a long time that I want to make it. Run Ethernet drops everywhere. Yeah. Ethernet adapter for ESP. Just the ESP. Uh, ESP. Uh, there are um, those boards now that, that have an ESP device and an Ethernet on there. Something like the Shelly 4 Pro, a box next to the breaker box. What's PLC? I don't know what PLC is. What's PLC, Janet? Well, we're definitely going to want temperature sensors in the wall will be inaccurate. How's it going? Won't say. Glad you're finally here. Dreaming about brilliant with a RJ45. In this particular case, Benny, I, I like that idea. I do like that, like, you know, in, in general, a light switch with an RJ45. In this particular case, I don't want to use screen switches because I want them to be a little more hidden, I suppose. It'll be interesting to figure out exactly how we're going to do that. Oh, programmable logic controller. What is that? <laughs> 
I mean, I know what that, that's a general term, right? You're not talking about a brand or something. You need to worry about humidity and condensation in my dome. Yeah, we need, I mean, we need humidity, temperature. Yeah, we need humidity and we will need to worry about condensation because we're going to have cooled floors. Five volt, 12 volt on a long wire from the circuit breaker. What if we just did, what if, what if a lot of the lighting, like how much lighting do we need that's going to be 120 volts? I just, I feel like why, why do 120 volt lighting anymore? I can see having some outlets because you're going to have some appliances or some things that plug in, but why do, why put in 120 volt lighting anywhere? Yusuf, how did I design my presence detection? Well, we're working on it right now. I think motion detectors are, are the simple, most reliable thing. You mean, as far as like, is there somebody in the house? The other thing that, um, that I use for presence detection as far as like who's home is the, I use Life360. It just works really well. The companion apps for Android and iOS have made a lot of strides. And so you can use that too. What do you got, James? Also, IHC in Denver. Both be integrated at the home set. IHC. Like, what's IHC? So you have the breaker box for circuit protection, then a box with the Shelly Pros. Run the wire from the circuit breaker to the switch and back to the Shelly, then from the Shelly to the lights. Okay, so that's why you're saying there's going to be a lot of, a lot of wire. What's the difference between those systems like K and X? Can't do home system. Low volt lighting? Sure. Yeah, sure. So J after dark, J after dark's going to jump in. J after dark's going to jump in. And show some video stream, show, share something with Volt Lighting. Yeah, start up a call, James. We'll give it a go. UTP and access points. Yeah, we will need a little bit of. Okay, I think we're going to have to have temperature sensors in different places. Okay, here comes James. All right, let me get you in there, buddy. Hold on a second. Can you all hear James? Say say hi. Sing a song or something. Hello, hello. One, two, three, four, five, six, oh. seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, but I gotta, I gotta mute that because that's a bad echo. Okay, try again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. nine. Okay. I think you got. Eight, I think five. we got him. I think we got it. All right. Okay. All right, man. What do you got? Okay. So this is a project I started a long time ago. These pot lights. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, yeah, we can see it. Okay. Take them oh, out. You. oh, whoa, they're flat. <gasps> oh. All right. And then I'll run to the back room. Bear with me because I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, okay. There is the controller box. All the LEDs are controlled individually. Power supply. That feeds the power into that board and then sends it out through the Ethernet to each light. Wow. So you can control in home assistance. I can't get but you can control all the lights individually that are all attached. Wow. Low voltage wise. Wow. Do you you built that or is that something that's available? No, I built it. I just need somebody to make the programming better. So that's why I haven't talked about it. Oh. Well, that's awesome. So POE, so each of those lights has well, it's a... Not, it's not POE, so you pick the voltage that you want to push through. So 12 volts, 24 volts. What are you using? Are you using 12 volts? I'm actually using 38 volts to make these bright. Oh, okay. That's a pretty unique, that's a pretty unique setup. So... It's weird watching the delay. 
So I just figured I'd share. It, it's a custom circuit board. It kind of came off of the, the hookups video when he made his own. So I wanted to do it with pot lights and able to control them. So I could turn off one at a time or half the room lit up or whatever I wanted. So now you've now you've opened Pandora's box here. Now now do you have this project like documented somewhere? <laughs> It's been running for two years. Wow. So, so there's no problem. I haven't had any issues with it. And it works really good. I just need the actual where you integrate it into Home Assistant to be better. And I'm not a programmer. So I've been depending oh. on people. All right, you guys. You heard it. J After Dark here in Discord. All right. Help him I'll out. Hey, <laughs> thanks, man. Right, Good to see you. It's Thanks. been a bit. All right. See ya. Okay. Well, there you go. There's definitely some low, low voltage lighting solutions. So one way or another, I think I'm going to do low voltage lighting. I don't, I, he's been keeping a secret. He's probably been trying to tell us, he's probably been trying to tell me for years. And I, you know, you know me, how that sometimes goes. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, James. Thanks for sharing that. And I, I would love to hear more about it. But yeah, I know we've got lots of these guys in here that are smarter programmers than uh, than me or you, maybe. <laughs> so let's get some help for James and make that thing uh, turn it into something real and something awesome we can we can all use. <laughs> he says no issues, and his wife walks by and he pauses. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we're, look, we're going to need multiple zones, so we're definitely going to need a temperature sensor here. Now, I have been running, I've been running temperatures, back to temperature sensors for a minute. I've been running temperature sensors in my, like connected to my Sonoff T3 light switches for a long time, and I, and I use them. And I think when you talk about being inaccurate, well, it, they may not be like if you put a laser in the middle of the room where you sit, that may come up with one temperature. And then if you put a temperature sensor in the light switch, it would have another temperature. And maybe you could say that sometimes that switch is going to change its temperature. So maybe there'll be some influence on that temperature sensor. But what I really want is relative temperature. I just want to know when it's going up. If I need to adjust it and, and say, okay, well, when that temperature sensor says it's 74 degrees, it's really 71 degrees. That's fine. I can, I can make those adjustments. I don't mind making those adjustments. Hey, Piston, how's it going? I don't mind making those adjustments, but um, if there's some other reason why putting the light or putting the temperature sensor in the light switch, let me know. Yeah, exactly. Right, Thanasis? That's what I'm saying. Is it, is the sensor itself somehow going to mal not work or is it because of the placement and, and the ds 18 b 20s those are good i've been using those and they work great they don't have humidity but i don't i don't need necessarily humidity everywhere look for multi-sensors motion and temperature in one unit that's kind of what i want to build you can create some sort of offset for the temperature at the wall yeah that's what i was thinking right there you go there's james there's james's uh ceiling pot light github so if anybody wants to help James with his firmware, please do. Please do. That'd be awesome. A zone that averages the sensors in the zone. I think we could put temperature sensors all over the place. Scarlax, I can't. I, I don't. I wish I knew what that says. But hi, how you doing? <laughs> well, we definitely need those. Are the ones that have the lights. I well, I have. I have the the eighteen B twenties. I have in. I have one here, in, on the on the um, wand box for the game. I have one in the bathroom downstairs, and it's been working great. Um, and it'll vary with the height of the placement. Yeah, that's cool, Lewis. I, I, it's more about relative relative temperature. Like I want to sit in the I can sit in the room and say, oh, it's comfortable, so I'm happy with the temperature, whatever it is. Or oh, it's cold, so I want the temperature higher whatever it is, right? So I think some temperature sensors in some strategic locations would be important. And definitely bedroom needs a temperature sensor, but where? And I don't 
really want Zigbee wireless temperature sensors. I really want a wired temperature sensor. The RM4 Mini has temp and humidity plus remote. I really want wired. I really want wired temperature sensors. I'm going to put it, I'm going to say here. Thanks, guys. Bunch of subscribing's coming in. We'll do some more unicorns. I haven't done those in a few minutes. They're supposed to be way accurate. What sensor do you use? The, well, I use, I mostly have the DH, the, the DHT11s. Yes, I mostly have the DHT11s. Yeah, and Yona, we were talking homebrew. Oh, man, we're, we're on it. Here it comes. It's the subscription train. Is this all Twitch or is this YouTube? I don't know. But anyways, thanks for subscribing, everybody. Accidentally run the Windows update. Uh-oh, now I'm crippled. Oh, no. Farrick, oh, no. Oh, we'll do this train because it's the train. If you go with mini splits for each room, it has them built in. Oh, uh, we're not going to have mini splits, Ray. We're going to just have, we're just going to have um, cooling in the floor and, and a little bit of a, like whole house fan. That's it. Put them in the ceiling. It will show the hotter. Yeah. And, and I don't have the ability to put wires in the ceiling. I could do that in the basement, but I couldn't do it in the, um, in the ceiling of the dome. And so for Dave and everybody else who's just uh, arrived, this is our hobbit hole. So we are building a, a, a fiberglass dome house with a basement and you bury it with dirt. And so what we're doing right now, which hasn't been done yet, is we're planning how we're going to wire all the smart stuff. You forgot what state I was in? <laughs> yeah, I, we don't, especially in this part of Idaho, I mean, we're going to want some kind of cooling, but this thing's going to be super well insulated. It's going to be, and we're going to have this radiant cooling in the floor. So I think we're going to be pretty comfortable. I don't think I've got a, a company working with me. That's pretty expert in these kinds of systems, the water you know, radiant kinds of systems. And when, when he's looked at the plans and talked to, um, uh, the, the guys that, um, do the engineering in that company and they, they're, they said, yeah, you should be pretty comfortable with just cooling the floor and maybe running. You're going to want to run some cool air through the house, but, but we're not going to need mini splits. Lewis, what will I do for a hundred thousand subs? We're going to do a 12 hour stream and we're going to do a house tour probably at the same time. Humidity is, uh, is the same indoors and outdoors. I think it'll be more humid inside sometimes just because you're going to have people in there. You have people in water in there and stuff. What's the name of the company for the Hobbit Hole? The, the name of the company that makes the dome is called Green Magic Homes. Green Magic Homes. Yeah, Kuba, I, I've been wanting to do the cooling in the floor, but the, um, the, it, was, it was hard to find a company that believed in my vision. Cause I thought, why not? And I, I do research, you know, I, I, I do dumb things, but I'm not a dumb guy. <laughs> I see that, that the problem with cooling in the floors is that the, the biggest problem is condensation. If you, if you make it too cold, if you make the floor or the water in the pipes too cold and the air outside is humid and hot, you'll get condensation. And if you have carpet on top of your radiant cooling floor, then that condensation will build up in the carpet or under the carpet. And then you're going to get mold and that's going to be awful. Um, Ooh, Scarlax, you have floor cooling. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Hey, Shane, how's it going? Um, in this situation, it's not a very humid location in general. So the humidity is going to be pretty low. So it's going to be pretty hard to get condensation at reasonable temperatures, like a, a glass of ice water, you know, that's like 40 degrees or something. That's probably going to get some condensation on it when you're outside in the summer, or whatever. But the water that we're going to run through the floors isn't going to be 40 degrees, right? We don't want to, we don't want to freeze our toes off. I'm thinking that water that we're going to put through the floor, we might actually even have to warm it a little bit because it's going to just come, be coming out of the ground or the temperature of the water coming out of the ground is going to be in the fifties probably. And even 50 degree cold floor is probably going to be a little bit uncomfortable on your feet, especially if you're a hobbit and you're barefoot. So 
but I, I recognize that that's the problem. We have to watch that condensation point. So what? So we watch the condensation point. We know what the humidity is. We know what the temperature is. And we make adjustments. Like that's not, that's not a reason not to do it. That's not a reason to instead go with an air conditioning unit in my mind and spend a bunch of electricity and a, add a bunch of duct work to the house and all, and all that. Um, big advocate of forced air heat, mostly for air circulation. Fresh air exchange system is key. Yeah. We are going to have a little bit of, 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 uh, you know, like a whole house fan kind of thing. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll probably just, we'll, we'll do it kind of like we do here in our house where we have an, a fan in the basement and we open the windows and turn the big fan on. But I think, or we put it, here, it's in the attic. I think for this house, it'll be in the basement. So it'll basically be, it'll suck air in from outside and down. I don't know if that's going to be the right way to do it though. We want it to suck it and push it out. So I'm not sure. We might have to put it on there. Earth ships have underground vent tubes. Yeah. And we may do, we may need to do a vent tube kind of like that. One of the, one of the, sh so this TV show, again, you guys, we got a lot of new people here that haven't been here from the beginning. We're going to be on TV. There's a, there's a DIY network show called Building Off the Grid, and they're going to be filming an episode of their show for this build. So, uh, if, and if you go to their website, um, Building Off the Grid, they have, uh, they've, they've done an episode on an earth ship. So. Water leak sensors. Oh, yes, Brad. Thank you. Water leak sensors. Okay. Let's do some temperatures. We definitely need a temperature sensor in the bedroom. Okay. We definitely need a temperature sensor here. And I don't want it to be too close to, oh, that's too, I don't want it to be too close to the fireplace over there. So we're going to put the temperature sensor, you know, I don't know, somewhere over here. And then we're going to want a temperature sensor somewhere over here kitchen we put it by the stove that's probably a bad idea we could put it temperature sensor there there i guess maybe maybe we'll put a couple maybe we'll put one well if we've got one there then let's put one over here that'll be okay all right so temperature sensors there so that's what one two three temperature sensors what do you think is that enough you could put one more and kind of average them out. I feel like we need one over here, but I don't know. Let's go look at the basement. We're going to need temperature sensors here. Oh, I already put temperature sensors. Wait, what? Oh, my motion sensors got changed to green. No. What has happened? No. No. But I guess it's actually the same. We're going to want motion sensor here. Uh, we do want temperature sensors. Why not put temperature sensors in each room? We can, we're going to have the zoning for the pipes probably. So starting to see, see why I, see why I had the idea of bunching this all up. Put temperature sensors with the smoke detectors. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> My wife's, so Janice is doing a lot of, uh, she's doing a lot of, um, the decoration stuff, uh, and she says, she just sent me a text. We need a few battle axes on the walls in the basement. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm doing this in a PDF. I'm just kind of marking it on top of a copy of the plans. Why only wired sensors? Um, reliability, Jovan. Uh, reliability and because I'm starting from scratch. So since I'm starting from scratch, I have the option. I have the op I have the option of of doing everything wired so might as well. Guys, I don't so so here's the here's my the thermostat idea. I know how I'm going to manage that because we're going to have radiant heat zones and those zones are going to have switches in the basement. And so what the thermostat would do is just go from from you know basically a thermostat's a temperature sensor and a relay, right? So that's what I've got. So I'm going to have yeah, temperature sensor in here, temperature sensor in here, temperature sensor here, temperature sensor here, downstairs. And and the and the, we'll probably have four zones. We'll have a zone here. We'll have at least three zones. We'll have, a, well, I don't know. We'll see what the people say. We may end up with two zones. We have a zone here for temperature and a zone here for temperature. That's probably what we'll do. I mean, as far as the, the radiant heat and the cooling, right? Because you don't want to go too crazy and be stupid. You do want this to have its own temp uh this own its own um uh heating and cooling and then maybe 
one up here. So probably, so we'll probably either have three upstairs and three downstairs, or sorry, two upstairs, ah, two downstairs and three upstairs or two downstairs and two upstairs. I'll kind of let them decide. That's okay. Company builder again. Oh, the, the dome is built by Green Magic Homes. Green Magic Homes. these guys. I, I, it seems to me that their, their ideas are great and, and they've been, you know, reasonably reliable. I think I have, I'm, I'm anyways, I'll have to actually get this stuff and they've been a little bit slow on some things, but you know, whatever everybody is. What did Thanos' catch? Uh Oh, that I need, do I need him? Do I need to know? Are any of the sensors hardwired? Every single one of them, Dave. Every one of them. That's the point so far. Every one of them. Who's Janice? What happened to Mrs. Z's? Yeah. Janice is my mistress. Sounds easy, but it's tricky to get it right. What protocol am I using for the wired sensors? I'm going to use Ethernet or run some kind of serial. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hammering that out, Omar. I'm hammering that out. I will either use, I will either use, uh, well, I think it's going to all be, honestly, it's probably going to be mostly ESP home. It'll probably be either the sensors will run low voltage wires all the way back to some hub or at each one of these points, I will have a ethernet board. Which is why having a, like a PoE board would be good because then the PoE would have enough, uh, it would have the ability to like trip a relay or something, right? At that point. To hang a painting, yeah. Hanging a painting is not going to be easy. So we've actually talked to a guy, uh, a friend of, of ours. Oh, what? The, why are my motion? Okay, no, we're okay. Let's go back to this. Okay, now. Now I can go. What happened to my edit? What happened to my pen? Oh, here it is. Re retract, no. What happened? What? Oh, that's because I'm on the wrong one. Dope. Oh, no, I'm not. Press right, fill and sign. What happened to my... Why is it... Oh, comment? I guess it's comment that I want. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, sorry. I was like, what happened to my menu? Comment. Okay, so they let you comment for free. They don't let you edit for free. Ah. Lame. ESP32 with Ethernet in every room with a temp sensor. Yeah, Thiesk, that's right now. I think if you were going to ask me today, what would you do if I had to like do this now, which I kind of do? Um, I think I would probably do the ESP32 PoE from Olimex and, um, and, and use that. I think that's what I would do. Well, what's this? Oh, Bobby Walters. Whole house is connected to that board. No kidding. That's crazy. That's awesome. Prepare for edit original comment. For it. Where's the network closet? It's in the basement. It's in the in, in the basement. Yeah, Matt, uh, what I've liked, and, and I was actually on the site last night to buy another another one or some more of them, um, the Olimex, the Olimex PoE, these right here, and I would probably honestly go with the separated ones just for 
I don't know. But they have they have ones that are isolated as well. So they have the ESP32 uh, PoE ISO. They call it this one. And I guess it just does it. It has a little bit different arrangement, a little bit different circuitry to isolate the PoE connections. It actually, looks like it has a relay on there. What the bleep is that? So, anyways, for about twenty bucks, you know, seventeen or more, seventeen for this one. 25 for that one for euros uh you know you get it, basically you're not using the wi-fi on this on this esp32 you're just you're using the esp32 which doesn't have to be wi-fi uh you plug it into ethernet and then you've got 14 pins for sensors i do my hands a server rack or network rack? Uh, I don't know. I may have to do a PoE switch. I may have to do like a big old PoE thing because if I use these, I'm going to need a lot of PoE. You know, I'm going to be running a lot of PoE stuff out for these kinds of sensors. And I think that's probably what I'll be doing. Carbon monoxide and smoke alarms. Yeah, we're going to have to get there. Okay, we got to we got to get moving. All right, so let's do this. Let's put in here text and there and we need to make that green and say that those are going to be our temperature sensors all right so we got temperature sensors um smoke detectors uh I mean, let's put those on here let's put those on here because yeah we're going to need them i just don't want to forget about them so let's put those on here and we'll do those by using a different color uh, smoke detectors will make them pink. You need one here, right? Smoke detector here, smoke detector here, smoke detector here. You go down the basement. And then need one here, need one here, one here, need one here. Interestingly, I, I don't think our guy has, uh, at least on the plans, he hasn't said anything about, um, about, uh, like our inspector guy hasn't said anything about smoke detectors. And I don't remember them being on the plan. Anyways, obviously we need them. And then do a little bit of a pink dot here. And then we'll put in a text that says smoke detectors. So now well, let's see. Uh it's so we're gonna need like if we run this, let's see, can you smoke detectors with Yeah. Outlets USB. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Richard. Let's talk about outlets and let's talk about lights. Ah oh, man. So the ceiling in this thing is so funky. I like the idea of low voltage lights. I very much like the idea of low voltage lights. It just makes sense to me. I know it's not traditional, but this is a hobbit hole. What what is there that's traditional about this? I don't know. Um okay. So I know there are rules about like how, where you're supposed, where you have to have receptacles and stuff, where you shouldn't and GFI and all that. Um, would you guys do any, have you seen anybody who just has like USB in the wall? You know, like a USB a jack just in the wall without a uh, public list for this where we can discuss the details. You know what, Ferenc? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And I was thinking about it today. I want to do some kind of a, um, I'm going to do it on my website. Okay. It will be at drz.com. I'm going to make a new blog page just for this Hobbit hole stuff. I'll send out some things every once in a while for Facebook and, and, um, Instagram, Twitter stuff, but I'm going to do a, like a blog 
maybe not daily, but it will be as things progress. And I would love more comments and more suggestions and, and all that on that. So USB on the wall sockets. It's common to have USB in the walls in hotels. Okay, good. Wall mount tablet. Okay, great. So we can do that. We can do that, right? We're going to do that. A Quindeca for spotlights, 12 volts in the ceiling. Oh, that's a great idea. I didn't even think about the Quinn boards for that. Okay. Yeah, useful to wire to a UPS in the house. How would it be a good plan for it? I did this for my house. I started to make a video. Oh, so plan for a UPS. Yes, a backup, battery backup. Well, this will have, uh, we're not, we're off the grid anyways, actually. This whole thing is backup. <laughs> this whole thing is battery backup. It's battery and generator backup. Um, solar battery backup. So not USB-C yet. Ooh. Well, we should definitely plan to make them USB-C, right? We'll still need the A's because that's what most of what we have now. Single gang outlets with a pair of USB ports on them. Put them all over the house. Okay, definitely. Definitely want to do that. Um, so... We'll do that because they have those that are so easy, right? They're, they're just plug in there. So the outlets, um, we'll have the outlets be charging ports. I was just wondering if we want to have other charging ports as well or not. Wireless chargers. That's a good, that's a good one. Let's see what James has for us here. Oh yeah. Perfect. Oh, look at that. It's got them both. Nice. Thank you, James. Who's that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I love you. Hi. Is that our house? No, that's not our house. That no, looks like our. Commerce. That looks like our couch, though, huh? They have the same couch. Wait, no. It's not our house. That's the McBride's. Mm -hmm. Um, wireless phone chargers, Scarlax, uh, right now we don't use them, but we, I, I, of the phones that we use in our house right now, only a couple of them are, um, only a couple of them are, um, are wirelessly uh, chargeable. Um, so we don't do that. So let's do, let's do now, um, Let's think about the lights. Let's think about how we want to do this. So if we do some kind of low voltage lights, which I like the idea of a lot. I like it a lot. Uh, in the bedrooms here, does anybody run? Like what if you wanted to plug in? Yeah, exactly. Do you have a need for sockets like ironing or hair dryers? We probably need some, uh, like definitely bathroom outlets. You know, we'll need some, we'll need some outlets in the bathrooms for those kinds of things. We'll need some for things like TV. Um, but I want to do lighting. Like I pretty much want all my lighting to be low voltage. I don't want to do, I'll put receptacles where they, where if code says you have to have them, then I'll have them. But beyond that, we're not going to have a lot of stuff that we're plugging in. DMX, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah, I'm thinking about DC outlets. What about that? Pirate, Ash, Pirate as himself. What about DC outlets? Places to plug in. I mean, we're certainly, I think we can plug in, um, we can put some 5 volt outlets there in a lot of places and a lot of things plug into five volts. I just think of all this, you can plug in, a, um, you know, all your, all these kinds of controllers too, right? Like if we want to do weird things with, um, LEDs or with, um, I guess not a lot of the smart devices, do they? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Like if we have five volts, we can plug in the, uh, echoes and the, you know, these kinds of monitors and tablets and all that stuff can plug into five volts. Convenient vacuuming. We're not even going to have carpet. I, I, we're going to have, this is all going to be hard floors. So we're going to be dusting and mopping. I have to have a robot. Johnny, you have 12, five, what do the 12 volt outlets look like? Show me what the 12 volt outlets look like. Is it just a barrel receiver kind of a thing? Female barrel plugs. That's what I'm thinking, Lewis. Does, do, do people do that? 
Do molding with light up on the ceiling. Yeah, love that, Nick, for sure. We're going to be able to do some cool stuff like that. So I'm thinking about, so some of these are just going to be plain sensors, but some of them are going to be this multi-sensor and the multi-sensor, I think I want my multi-sensor to be, let's, 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 let's draw ethernet. Let's draw ethernet. Let's pick a color and we'll say, this is where we're going to put ethernet and we'll make it blue. Okay. So where are we going to put ethernet? Now, when I say we're going to put ethernet, this could be just it, to plug in an, a computer an internet, ethernet kind of thing. It could be lighting, like what James showed us that he has. Uh, it could be these uh, multi adapters. You know, like we're talking about the ESP 32s with their, um, with their, with their capabilities. So let's do that. Okay. So here we go. We're going to put, we're definitely going to put one here. That's ethernet. I kind of like want one everywhere. What if I put one everywhere? There was a, a light switch. Like I kind of like that idea everywhere. There's a door. There really isn't a door here. So ignore that, but everywhere there's a door. I said that, I said that a while back to some people. I said everywhere, somebody, one of my friends was building a house and that, and he's like, what should I do smart wise? And I said, everywhere there's a door run ethernet. Cause you don't even know for sure what you're going to want to put there until it's, you know, later. Unify has in wall access points, which have built in, which have a switch built in. Oh, cool. So then where else? So we're also going to need an ethernet. I think we definitely need an ethernet here with this island in the kitchen. Let's see. So that's there and there and there and there and there. I think we need something over here. I think we're going to need ethernet on this, on this wall as well. So we'll put it over here. And that may actually end up being where this temperature sensor goes too. Now our floor is going to be concrete. So whatever we want to stub up through the floor, we have to do that first. Wherever you run ethernet, run two. The future will thank the past you. <laughs> is that right? So not even just one, run two, huh? Behind the TVs, phone jacks, doorbell, at least one per room. Okay, so let's go downstairs now too. I think we should put one over here. I mean, why the heck not? Right? You just don't know what you're going to need until you need it. Oh, we're going to need one over here. I'm just thinking about any place somebody might sit down and want to plug in a laptop or something too, right? Um, I wouldn't mind having one over here. This is a good spot for it. Oops. Oof. That was a little bit crazy. Hey, Zachy. Hello. I'm also looking at this as, as where we can put this that's in a wall sort of a situation where we can run it down. We're planning the smartness of the hobbit hole. Did ah. you just take a nap? Maybe. <laughs> okay, let's go down to the basement. Same kind of thing. So this is a actually going to be, well, yeah, I know what this is actually going to be. It's going to be this room and then we're going to have, we do have this bathroom over here. And then down here, we actually have a bathroom with a door over here. So we're going to put that, uh, it should be about here going to be the TV's actually not here. I, 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 I'm wrong about that. The TV's over here. Uh, and this would be sort of combined with this in this bathroom wall thing. Um, definitely going to need, we're going to put one over here. Uh, we're going to put heck man. We're going to put one over here. We're going to put one over here. This is, what is, it? This is uh internet, like ethernet stuff. We're oh. definitely going to put one here. But it's, it's, it's both. It's not just internet. Cause what, one of the things we're talking about is like, you know, I used like the, the, the device that I used in the dragon, it runs off of an ethernet device. 
So Ethernet meaning like network cable, right? Yeah. Like, you know yeah, what that is? Yeah. Okay. Zach's here with me, guys. If you didn't pick that up, he's right here. Say hi, Zach. Hi. Hi. That's what his head looks like. You know, you don't get to see that. Um, but that little device, if we wire, we have that those devices, we can run power through that same network cable. And then when it gets to that device, that device can do things like run these lights or like run the, um, you know, run like these little bitty L RGB LEDs fine, but it can run a relay and it can have sensors and all that stuff that will go all back to, and it can all just be one wire, just one cable. And then that on, on the end of that is this POE device. I love it. I love it. Hey, Eddie, what did you miss? We can start over for you. <laughs> what about Christmas light drops for my Culp and Falcon board? Sir Charles says, that's right. What about that? We got to have that too. You might not want smoke detectors in the kitchen can become annoying. Not in the area for code. Oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. All right. So ethernet, ethernet. I actually think we should put some in other places too. Like on the, like near some of these things, like the beds. I don't know that we want two, but there, there. I think we're going to want another one on here probably. Okay. That's good. That's good. Look how much, look at all that blue. Look at all that blue. And what we may end up doing Over here, and there. No, we'll, that that'll be good. That'll be good. We don't gotta be crazy. We don't gotta be crazy, do we? we? Gotta be crazy. And then, of course, this is like in this room, this utility room, somewhere around here, is where the the hub is for all this stuff. So that's gonna be the big switch, or multiple switches. Some for some things, and some for other things, right? So that's the big switch. USB and Ethernet closer to the desks instead of closer to the doors. Um, well, so this one would be like if we had a desk over here, that would be for this one, that one, that one, that one. Those are for the sort of desk kind of areas. Uh, bed there, bed there. I mean, do we want two in that room? I don't know. What's it going to hurt, I guess? We definitely want like the USB charging stuff over here. Like we don't, I don't think we need, well, let's go through and just put in where we would want just USB power. Let's do that. Let's just do USB power. So let's go here. Let's pick text and then here and then change it to blue. And then this is going to be uh, ethernet. Okay, and then let's let's pick a new color. Don't forget whole house audio. No, you're you're so right, man. No, you are so right. We need whole house audio. We totally do. We're gonna run out of colors. See, this is why I want to do this. I started thinking about this, and I was like, oh my gosh, you cannot have enough Ethernet cables in your house. <laughs> Central ceiling locations for wireless access points. Good point too. It is acceptable code. Oh, is it acceptable code to bury two inch PVC in the concrete to run ethernet and low power runs? I don't know. But we, we can, we, we definitely in the basement and in the floor of the first floor, we can run conduits and wires and stuff. Yeah, we need cameras. So let's, 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 let's do our colors here real quick and say, we're going to need, um, let's do a USB power color. Okay. And then we're going to do some text for that. And we're going to say that's going to be USB. So this is just USB power for charging and for whatever crazy other things. Okay. So that's going to be USB power. And before we forget, let's do, um, let's pick a color for cameras. I guess we're down. Oh, let's do yellow. Okay, because this is, and when I say cameras, I mean PoE NVR cameras.
PoE and VR cameras. And then we need audio. USB-C PD wall outlets up to 30 per jack. Am I building a new house? Yeah, Doug. We're building a hobbit hole. We're building a hobbit hole. Smurf tubing. Carlon makes Smurf tubing. You said concrete. I assume you were talking grade, no basement. Oh, hit save, hit save. Yes, thank you. God, you guys are awesome. This is so fun. What a great group of guys, you know? Mm. And gals. I don't know if there's any gals watching today. HDMI through walls or a matrix show. Oh, golly. Okay, let's put an HDMI color in here too because we are, we are going to need a little bit of that in the walls. Might as well. HDMI. Let's do HDMI as... Um, so we'll do speakers. Let's do let's do this for speakers. Speaker wire. Wow, I thought we were doing good and there's so much more still to do. You read the comments, Zach. Can you tell me what I miss? Um, if there's anything that I mean, you don't have to read every comment. <laughs> Change the yellow color. You don't like the yellow color? <laughs> Speaker wires. Um, and then let's go in here and change the color for um, HDMI. We'll just make the HDMI something silly like this kind of light green. Someone said skip the HDMI. Someone said skip HDMI. I mean, I, I want to I wanna Cat, not dude, forget it. Cat 6A. Cat 6A instead of Ethernet? Oh, instead of HDMI. Skip the HDMI, run cat six A instead. Well, oh, thank you. Who's who's who took the made a donation? Scarlax, hit the save button. <laughs> Thanks, man. We've done a lot of work. <laughs> so cat six instead of HDMI, why? Oh, and water leak. Oh my gosh. There's so many colors. I know, running out of colors. Uh, I guess let's do this as water leak. That is important. Oh, it's so hard to see. So I don't have that many colors, but that's fine. Water leak. So what? Cat six instead of run lots of cat he's six. Not, he's not saying. Or you could do H H D. Oh, cat six HDMI. Your network closet is. Growing in this chat. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> you can do HDMI over Ethernet. Oh, okay. Well, that's good then. We won't worry about that. Then I won't worry about HDMI. And that's a good idea. Like I, when I was thinking HDMI, I was thinking I would run it back to a main place, but maybe I don't need to. Instead of using colors, use numbers or letters. Yeah. No, it's getting so complicated. All right. Uh, we definitely want. Leak sensors. Let's let's grab the color for the leak sensors. And the leak sensors, we are going to want a leak sensor in the bathroom. Every bathroom. And in the kitchen. Um, and it's not, it wouldn't hurt to have one here. I don't know that it would do much good. But we definitely... Maybe in the or something. I don't know. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Right, if it like... You know, somewhere near this. That's an interesting thought. Uh, somewhere near the windows. Probably just in the basement. Uh, I definitely want in, in eat every bathroom. And the bathroom, again, the bathroom's down here. It's not over there. It's down here. I know it's weird. But. And then in the utility room, for sure. Um, yeah, and then probably somewhere in here. Right, so we can know if like there's water leaking in from the. That could be another spot just for another Ethernet run, honestly. Open it in Photoshop. You could have different layers for each color and category. Yeah, that would be smart, Thanasis. That would be smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to acknowledge that that would be smart. <laughs> now I'd have to start over. Hey. Uh, I don't know what happened to that. Not outside the shower if you have kids. So we did have, um, we did have it go off. We did have a leak detector in the bathroom go off because it, and it, and it is because the toilet overflowed up here. USB power, see Banggood. Oh, good. And the nice thing about Banggood is Banggood will give me stuff for free. 
We got to do all this. I'm going to probably, you know what, Thanasis? I'll probably do this in the, in the, in the next one. Kitchen sink near your water heater. Yeah. Kitchen for sure. Right. Kitchen for sure. Got one in the kitchen. there. All right. Let's, let's do the fun and uh, let's do the uh, speakers. I, I want to do this, the whole house speakers. And we're going to have to kind of hide these, right? Because I want speakers, but I'm not going to have like speakers in the ceiling necessarily. I will definitely have down here. Okay. So this is the sort of TV room. So we definitely need speaker wires here. And the, uh, the, I guess the, the hub of the movie room is going to be in this room right here. It's going to be in this big utility room back here. So if we did run HDMI, we would run it from here over to there. So I might do that, but we will also have stereo receiver here. And in this room is where we would need surround sound. So this room, we probably could put speakers in the ceiling. So let's put, you know, we're going to put speaker here. We're going to put a 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 speaker here because this will be the, where the TV is going to be on this wall. Um, and then I don't know what else. Now those will all have to go back here. Where do you put your subwoofer in that situation? Probably in the back. Do you put it in the room? I think I think we would want some speakers for music in this room too. Is it going to be stick framed? No, but I have ceiling access. So we'll have a subfloor here. We can put stuff. All I hear is money. Yeah, me too. So you put it in the rear corner. So we would probably want to put it. It's probably gonna have to be back here. I guess we could put it back here, but what we'll have to have is some sort of like a table. We'll put it under that, under the table, under the sofa. Nice. <laughs> I like that. I like it. Okay. Um, I think in this, in here, we're going to want to have speakers. Yes, dear. You might want to just take that away. <laughs> did you fill it or not? Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, there's nothing left. <laughs> In wall speakers. Doesn't matter where you put the subwoofer. Okay, creative. Thank you. So this is kind of a an area where we'll we'll want to just kind of sort of party. But I think two speakers in here is probably going to be enough. And then, um, so I don't think bedrooms. Although I do like, I like the idea of having, um, you know, being able to make announcements. I make announcements through the Amazon Echoes. So I will throw Amazon Echoes all over the place and they can do, they can be speakers and play music too. And be part of the whole house audio. So that whole house audio will be different than Amazon Echo whole house audio. Let's go upstairs. Um, we definitely want, definitely want some kind of music here. We, we do a lot of music in the bathroom. I mean, everybody does music in the shower, right? The couches are in the wrong spot. Then, and, and, and the, there's a different, there's a changed floor plan. Let me show you if I have it here. There's a, there is a changed floor plan. So I'll, it will, it will make sense when I show you the changes. Cause we did, we, from what I'm, from what I'm showing you here, there has been a few little changes. Um, well, I'll have to show you another time. I don't want to spend 20 minutes looking for them because we're almost done actually for the day. Ah, another layer for presence detection. Should we POE again? Nah. made some good ceiling speakers that can handle moisture. Um, we definitely want, so before we finish, so speakers, I definitely want, um, you know, something outside because I want to be able to sit out here and listen to some speakers. So we'll definitely want, uh, let's see. I, we want outdoor speakers out, oops, outdoor speakers out this way. 
We want outdoor speakers out here. Because if we're going to have a hot tub, it's going to be out here. Um, I would think about running something here for an outdoor speaker as well. Uh, let's do cameras real quick. Where should we put cameras? Now, here's an important consideration with cameras. Uh, we're going to rent this out. There's going to be people here who who are not us. Um, USB power. We didn't put any USB power stuff yet. Down. Cameras. I'm out of I'm out of colors, guys. I've run out of colors. I guess flesh, fleshy, fleshy colors for cameras because you know people get naked. So cameras and this thinks security. Like I have a lot of cameras inside my house right now. Um, better get a wire sponsor. <laughs> you know what? I they told me I can. They told me I can work. I can work the contractors of all of all kinds and get a uh, get one sponsor that they'll let us put on the TV show. They'll basically say, you know, special thanks to this person to this company, and. If the company wears their logos on their shirts or whatever, they won't blur them out. Everybody else, they blur out all the logos and everything. Um, but they they told me we can have one that we choose and it should be the one that gives us the best deal. So if I get somebody to give us a, an awesome deal on this, like I could probably do something stupid like Vivint, <laughs> but I don't want to do Vivint. I want it my way. Um, you could put your plan in... Unify and design the website and you can add FOV and see what they cover. Oh, that's a good point. Well, I definitely think we want, um, you know, we want a lot of outside. We're going to have a camera that will point at the outside of the house. Um, I think we're going to need, where would be, and I, it's got to be like, not like totally crazy invasive, you know? Oh, Nabucasa, get Nabucasa to sponsor the video. <laughs> What's that? I want to be able to like, if somebody does break in the house, if somebody does break in while nobody's there, I want it to be uh, on camera. Like I want a good picture of whoever it is because the likelihood of getting there or somebody getting there before they get out is low. So we need to know who they are, right? If they get, if they get out. So. Um, yeah, I agree. Let's put, let's put, we definitely want sort of back, you know, coming in this back door here. We definitely want, oh, it changed that to a camera from speaker. Oh no, did that mean it changed all my ones downstairs too? No. All right. So actually that's probably a good place for a camera because if people are going to approach the house, they're going to come from this way. So that's probably a good place for a camera. And that's a good place for a camera. What else? Um, going to have to hide them. Indoor cameras should be removable. Explain that, Louis. Removable so like we can turn them off. Doesn't mean you have to use their stuff. Yeah, it would help with the layout probably, huh? Powering indoor cameras through smart outlets. Figure out the cost for wire. Really? Figures out the cost for wire? Wow. Okay. I'll I'll play with that. I'll play with that offline a little. Yeah, I've happy I've been happy with my real link cameras. I'm sure I would use real link again. Um all right. I would probably will put something that's gonna go like long ways down this whole space. Right. If you put a camera at one end of this, you're going to see everything. So where and how? Because we don't really have a wall, I guess. Well, remember that mom wanted to have that really thing in front of the stairs. That yeah, they decided not to make it so high. But yeah, I, I, I like what you're going with that. Bottom right TV. 
when will I rent it? Yes, absolutely. Photochromax. Yes, it'll be a rental and it will be, if things go well, it will be available this summer. If things go well, isn't it rather isolated? Why have cameras indoor? Survey. Oh, I still want people it. Like if somebody gets in Kenneth, I want to see who it was. I want to see who it was. And, and you know, it's a tricky thing when you have a rental, right? I'll have to look into this because if you're going to rent it out, I don't really want to be on surveillance, you know, have the people on surveillance, but you know, at the same time, if you're, if you, I want to know, like if something is broken or if somebody's doing some bad business, I want to know, you know, I want to know, you know, just make sure your cameras don't point to any rooms. Yeah. Bedrooms or bathrooms. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. A pair of cams pointing towards the doors plus motion detection. So it, just so you can see people coming in the doors or coming in the doors or the windows. Let's go down to the basement and see. I'm trying to think if we had, I know, cause I know what this floor plan looks like. And this could be used as a bedroom. So we probably don't want a camera in there, but if we had a camera, if we had one over here, so maybe here go pointing this way, that might be good. Or over here, but if we do it over here, we're not going to see if anybody you know, from this way. So I would probably do this. I, I'll play with that thing online and see, because that pointing this way might be a good way to capture most of what's important down here. And I don't need much. Like I don't need a ton of camera stuff on the inside of the house. I just want to capture any burglarations and probably just one in here. And maybe what we'll do, like you said, Zach, maybe we will put it here. Uh, 24 seven surveillance drone. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> pointing to the front door, pointing to this door here. We'll have that one for anybody coming in this way. Towards the front of this way. door in the basement. I think I, I'm I'm feeling something over here and it's probably gonna have to be on this wall pointing this way. Something like this, maybe. I'm gonna have to work on that. That is gonna take some work. Well, I think we made some progress. I think we made some pretty good progress. Have I thought about lockable storage room? We can leave your stuff. Yes, absolutely, Chris. We have. We have. And uh what we will what, it, what we will probably have is in this um well, we'll have a probably like locked. Um, we will have in the pavilion an area where we can lock stuff up, but we will probably also have something in the utility room where, where we can lock up. We'll also have under the stairs. So maybe we can use the under the stairs as where we lock things up. So, because we're going to want some of our own stuff that we don't want everybody to use, you know. Oh, camera system with motion tracking. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know deposits and rental contracts. It'll be rent like short-term rental. I mean, we were talking VRBO kind of stuff, you know, overnight, couple nights, that kind of thing. Oh, what does it say? U.S. law, responsible expectation of privacy covers places that are assess assumed to be private, including bathrooms. Yeah. Done Airbnb in Hollywood Hills with cameras in common areas and everybody was fine with it. Okay, good. Good. Doug, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, I changed the timing of my window now so that it comes up at the right time. Am I moving, Tyson? No, I'm not moving. How you doing, by the way? Uh, we're building up in Preston, Idaho, though. We're building like a, a rental, a rental house. How will you protect the 4G modem on top of the hill? I suggest put an outhouse. 
goat house or something and hide it. So what we have, and um, I didn't show this at all. Let's save because I think we're probably, I'm going to put this away since we're done with the stream for tonight. But uh, this was really helpful. Uh, this was really good, guys. I hope this was fun. I hope this was good for you. We're going to have to visit this again because now I'm going to have to take this and actually kind of draw out some lines and think about it. And we're going to we're going to do it again. All right, John, first time unicorns for you, my friend. Uh, but the, we, we have this pavilion space and the pavilion. I will show you the um, the plan of the pavilion here. Hold it, hold it. Pavilion. So this is the pavilion. This is the, the green dragon, I'm calling it, right? Yep. It's got, this is where the solar panels are going to be. They're going to be on this roof here. And um, this roof is going to be green. And <laughs> it's going to be a metal, uh, grooved metal roof that's going to be green. And then we'll make this just look kind of woody, shingly, whatever. But it has stairs going up to what is a, I don't know if the right word is salt box, but I've heard it called something like that in before. So it's a loft kind of a space up here. And in that space will be batteries, solar inverter, um, it, it, uh, 4G ethernet, you know, that's where the, that's where that will be. And the antenna will be popped out of the seal of the roof or off the side of the house, that kind of thing. So that's where, I mean, and this will certainly be locked and camera will be, we'll have to have a camera up here too. Cause we don't want anybody getting in there. Um, but yeah, that's that's what that's going to be. And here's this gives you a better idea of what it sort of looks like. So uh, the pavilion, this is facing. Let's see, this is the the south side is down here. So the hobbit hole is going to be over there down in the distance. And you come up here, you can be under the pavilion, you can picnic and chat and do whatever. Um, and then this stair place will have the storage on oh, the generator will be uh, on this concrete pad too. The generator has to be on this concrete pad. And this is the overall layout. This is the overall layout of it. So right now there's a well up here we have to run. I did this with the road or this is what we would think of as, a, as doing for the road because this part here is kind of steep. We had initially the pavilion way down here. I think the pavilion's gonna be a little bit higher up. It's not gonna be right next to the to Hobbit Hole because when we take pictures at the Hobbit Hole, I don't think you wanna see the pavilion in the background. So we're gonna move the pavilion you know, up the hill a little ways, but probably not all the way up to the top. Uh, this right here is like the best, well, I don't know if it's the best sledding area, but this is all great for sledding. So one thing we didn't talk about was I need a, I need a hoist and you know, we, we need a, a ski lift basically right here. Um, and then this lays out the other things, the geothermal pipe field, the septics, we're going to bury a propane tank. So that's it. All right. Thanks for your help guys. That was awesome. I'm going to print this out and keep working on it. And then I will start, uh, I will start the blog. Did you buy the lot next to you? No, that's not next to us. No, no, no. We bought, this is 40 acres in Preston, Idaho, Tyson, 40 acres up in Preston, Idaho. So that's where we're going. All right. Let's get the kids up here and do some signage sign off. I didn't answer any questions. I didn't answer any questions. So I'm sorry. Folk lift. Yes. You know what? You're not too far off. Denvin. I have, I, well, we do have the forklift motor, but I also have two of the forklift pump motors that we could use. But I also have a treadmill motor and a uh, a winch. So I've got lots of things we can try. Your your family's from there? I, why am I not surprised, man? I'm not surprised. There's good folks from up there, Tyson. That's good to know. Where, where at? Am I going to be Glenn Beck's neighbor? Oh, hey, Dan. Is Glenn Beck up there? I didn't know that. I did not know Glenn Beck was up there. Save the annotations before closing. Yeah. I think if I hit save, it'll save it, right? Oh, not save as. If I just hit save, it should. Oh, because I just did save it. Let's open it and make sure that it's saved, though. Yeah, there's all my, there's all my notes. So we're good. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah, that was fun. Well, we join us uh, on the journey, guys. We'll start the blog. I'll probably I'll probably create the page and write the first blog post tonight for the Hobbit Hobbit Hole website on on Doctor Z's. Okay, Let's see if this works. Hash thirty nine. It's time for sign on.
I got it. I need to change it because it's got a because it's got an apostrophe s. And so she's she she messes it up. S time for sign off. S time for sign off. Look what we did, guys. We we spent the whole two hours working on the Hobbit hole, putting in where we're gonna have all the smart stuff. So where we're gonna have like USB chargers, and where we're gonna have temperature sensors, and where we're gonna have cameras. That's what all the dots are. All the colors. Door sensors, motion sensors, temperature sensors, cameras. where we're going to have Ethernet, where we're going to have speaker wires, cameras. all that stuff. There's going to be so many cameras here. There's not going to be that many. There, there'll be some. I, I see I, I, two I, so Yeah, far. there's going to be three. a mix. Not as many as we have at our house, and just because oh. it's not that big. No, if so. Three. Okay. Will I have a link? Yes, I will post. When I when I do it, Thiesk, I will put out. Uh, I will put it out on like Twitter, Instagram, that kind of stuff. But it's going to be... On my website instead of on blog, like, you know, uh, another blog website. Just watching this. Please, please do the LED lamp stand. Okay. We're going to do it. Dawson, are you picking your nose on TV? No, I have a bloody nose. Oh, no, that's no good. No bloody nose. All right. What do we have to do after sign off? What are we going to do? At, what, sorry, I was reading Tyson's text. <laughs> I've got a minute, Tyson. Uh, um, after. What? What's that? How are we going to? How are we going to? Like we are at Hogwarts. Like Hogwarts. Everybody's doing Hogwarts. We're going to watch Hogwarts. Okay. okay. Everybody has to be some. I want to be Dobby. You want to be Dobby? I'm a Hermione. All right, let's do it. Ready? As always, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Until, Until next, next time. time. Adios. Adios. I don't know what I was doing. I was doing like As Dumbledore always. or something like that. Uh, All right.